As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. Well, welcome to our Wednesday morning devotions. Thank you again for joining with us. We're almost dusted with the theme of five. You'll be pleased to know. Just three more devotions to go. We're looking at the moment uh, this week at the first five books of the New Testament, history books, the history of the life of Jesus, and of course then following on the history of the life of his church how the church moved and grew out of Jerusalem right across the known world. We've begun with the four Gospels and we're finished on Friday with the story of the book of Acts. We have thought about Matthew and his focus on introducing us to Jesus as the King of the Jews and helping us to see how radically different the kind of king of the Jews, Jesus proved to be. And then yesterday we thought about Mark's story. Mark presents Jesus as the son of man, identifying with our own humanity, but also then thinking about discipleship and how as disciples we have a habit sometimes of blowing things and how Jesus never gives up on us, thankfully and ultimately continues to use us as he used those first disciples to continue to build his church. So today we're looking at Luke's story of Jesus. And I'm just going to read Luke chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to us by those from the first who were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account to you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things that you have been taught. Luke, of course, was also not one of the uh, first 12 um, disciples. In fact, he was a Gentile and he was a doctor. And um, ultimately and obviously, of course, he took a very keen interest in the healings of Jesus, not just the physical healings of Jesus, but the way that Jesus was able to heal people at so many different levels. What we're told here is that Luke also was a bit of a researcher. He sought to bring a very clear, accurate, and historical account of the life of Jesus, primarily for a Gentile audience, but specifically for a Roman governor named Theophilus. Luke's gospel is the longest of all the gospels that we have, not in terms of chapters. Remember, chapters were, are a fairly modern invention, uh, but in terms of the output, the content of the story that's being told. And because of that, inevitably, Luke brings to us a number of significant themes. Later on, he follows up his story of Jesus with part two, which, of course, is the story of Jesus's church. And those are often linked together. They're often referred to as the Luke Acts account of the life and actions of Jesus through his church. I think what Luke wants to tell us at the heart of his message is that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Jesus was the Messiah, and of course he was divine. Luke's very clear about that. 
then Luke wants us to understand that this salvation which Jesus brought is universally available. It's not just for one people, it's for all people. And regardless of race or sex or social status or health, everyone could be included in this amazing story of the life of Jesus. Luke tells us that Jesus lived a life of humility and compassion. And of course, ultimately that cultivated in suffering. But Jesus triumphed over death and in order that all could eternally live with God if they accepted the truth of his message. And I think for me personally, it's accessibility, the accessibility of Jesus that remains one of the standout features or truths that Luke wants to tell us about. He's available, Jesus is available to everyone. He's there for everyone. Accessibility is a big issue in contemporary society. We live in a world where often the greater sense of importance that people assign to themselves, well, seemingly the more distant, the more remote they become. When I was a teacher, the headmaster's office was up a flight of stairs and there was this traffic light system to let you know whether the head teacher was willing to see you or not. Red meant no, green meant you were welcome to climb up the stairs and to ex access his presence. Following on from the last two years that we've all had to travel through, accessibility seems to have gone on, uh, or the lack of accessibility seems to have gone to another level. Those that we need to see seem to have become more and more distant from us. But that's not the case with Jesus, Luke wants to tell us. Jesus remains accessible to all. And Luke really wants us to grasp the significance of that. Jesus is not hidden away in a church building, nor is Jesus at the top, on the top floor of a huge great office block that has guards on the door and a sophisticated security system. Jesus is here with us now. He's here among us. And he will be with us wherever and to whoever we go today. Jesus remains the way. And he invites us today to walk with him in his way. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. 